The strategy guide is pretty straightforward at the start. Name your rival, I named him Nintendo, walk into the grass and pick your starter. It did tell me to pick the potion up in the PC at your starting house, which was helpful and say goodbye to your mother. And it also said to pick the starter I liked the most, so I picked Bulbasaur. I named it subscribe, which you should totally do by the way, and I hammered away to win my rival battle, just as the guide said, got the parcel, caught a Pidgey, named it Twitter, follow me on Twitter by the way, link is in the description, and headed to Route 22 since it suggests that I catch a Pokemon here before the optional rival battle, although it doesn't tell me that the battle is optional. I caught a Mankey and named it Hawk, and then level up my Pokemon to be between level 7 and 9, just as the guy suggests. I beat my rival pretty easily, and there's really not much to be said in the Viridian Forest, but I do catch a Caterpie and name it Dan, and then head towards Pewter City. There's only one event in Pewter City, and according to the guide, it reads, There is only one event in Pewter City, but you can visit the nearby gym for 50 Poke Dollars. It doesn't get you anything, but it's interesting. The Pokeball noted on the map is invisible, so search the area for it. You won't be able to proceed to the east till you complete the gym leader battle, so head for the gym. What? I found that wording to be really awkward and I'm not really sure what it means, but I headed into the gym battle anyway against Brock, and the guide says to have Pokemon between levels 11 to 13, so I do just that. Subscribe and Hawk handle the gym pretty easily, although surprisingly the guide doesn't tell me anything about type advantages or what types Brock's Pokemon are, so I just hammer away at him again, just like the guide says. I don't know why I keep saying hammer away. I head towards Mount Moon and on the way, it specifically tells me not to buy the Magikarp in the Pokemon Center right outside of Mount Moon. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I always buy the Magikarp. It's a tradition for me whenever I play a Kanto-based game, but since the guide says not to, I guess we're not going to because apparently they're so common in Kanto. I go through Mount Moon pretty easily as the guide tells me exactly where to go, which is pretty cool. Pick up the Dome Fossil because I prefer Chaos, and Teach Hawk Mega Punch because it's a pretty decent move and I don't really have that many other options. Now in Cerulean City, it tells me to battle Misty, and I have to level up my Pokemon to be between levels 18 and 21, so I have to do a little bit of grinding. If only there was a group of nearby trainers or something I could battle for faster XP, like on a route up north or something, but since the guide tells me to battle Misty first, I am forced to grind the wild area and not head north yet. Misty's gym was pretty easy since my Bulbasaur evolved to Ivysaur at this point, so that's two badges down already. The guy did mention to use grass or electric types in this gym against Misty, which was a lot more helpful than the Brock fight, but I really think it would have made a lot more sense for the guy to tell me to battle my rival first and go battle trainers up north so I can grind a little bit higher. But hey, if Nintendo endorses this, they gotta know better than me, I guess. So after beating Misty, I head north to fight Nintendo. Never thought I'd ever say that sentence, but it goes pretty smoothly. My Pidgey kept getting critted again. I don't know why my Pidgey has this knack for having terrible luck. It also got poisoned three for three times in the Verdian Forest, but Ivysaur was able to clean up. I was a little scared of this Abra, but thanks to the handy dandy guide, I looked up Abra's level up moveset, and apparently it has no moves to hit Ivysaur, so that was pretty easy. Charmander was the same, it was level 18 and didn't even evolve yet, what's up with that Nintendo? So I beat the rival anyway, and now I have to head towards Route 24. Route 24 was easy enough, I go help Bill and get the SS hand ticket just as the guide says. I head towards Vermilion City, and the game has a lot of events for us to do in the city. First, we have to get the VS Seeker from this trainer of the Pokemon Center, we'll probably never even use it, get the old rod so we can catch our own Magikarp if we want to now, but we still probably won't ever use this, and pick up the bike factory so we can get the bike from Cerulean City. And then we have the most important event of this area, the SS Ant. The guide suggests that all my Pokemon be around level 20 for the rival fight, and since they are, I just go straight to the rival battle, ignoring most of the ship, although the guide warns me about Nintendo's powered up Kadabra, since it is quite fast. It tells me just to be faster than the Kadabra if I want to beat it. Wish I thought of that myself. Thanks, Nintendo. I beat my rival pretty easily, get the HM for a cut, and now it's time to go to Lieutenant Surge's gym. The guide recommends that I use ground types as they are super effective against electric Pokemon, but since I don't have any, I just rely on Hawk for most of this gym. I don't know why the guy didn't suggest I go through Diglett's cave before the gym to catch a Diglett, which happens to be a ground type, for this gym and collect some of the items in Route 2 that'll help me out later, but since I'm trying to pretend like I've never played these games before, I battle Lieutenant Surge first as the guide suggests. I buy some Paralyzed Heals, it tells me to do that as well, and aside from getting paralyzed and double teamed so much, the gym really wasn't that bad. 
Now at this point, the guide gets a little confusing for me. It says that on Route 11, east of Vermilion City, I should go left and enter the Pokemon Center to heal, then go around the bend into Rock Tunnel. Rock Tunnel isn't on this route though, so I think that the guide got confused with Route 9, which the guide tells me to go to at the end of the section about Lieutenant Surge's battle. Turns out the tip that they have on the page about Route 9 is the same exact tip they had on Route 11 telling me to go around the bend, but it also tells me to teach Flash to one of the Pokemon on my team since I needed to get through the Rock Tunnel much easier. There's only one issue with that though, I don't have Flash yet. The guide also didn't tell me anywhere as of yet where to get Flash. I know it's near the other side of the Diglett's Cave on Route 2, which the guide said was optional by the way, but if someone has never played these games before, I can see them getting stuck at this point, especially if it was 2004 and they couldn't just look it up online as easily as they could today. Luckily in the appendix at the end of the guide, it does tell me that I could find Flash on Route 2, and since I now have access to Cut, I can access it near the Viridian Forest. They really should have put more of an emphasis on backtracking to get Flash in the actual walkthrough. Like it would have been amazing if they said, hey, before battling Surge, go through the Diglett's Tunnel. You could possibly catch a Diglett here, which is good against Lieutenant Surge. And oh, by the way, on the other side, you get Flash, which you need to progress in the game. I ended up going back and getting it anyway, and I had to catch a few more Pokemon for the aid to give to me as I needed 10, one of which was a drowsy I named Cletus since I can teach it Flash. I don't know why I picked the name Cletus, it just seemed really fitting at the time. Headed into Rock Tunnel, and either this map is terrible or I have no idea how to read a map. Most likely the latter, but I couldn't figure out where I entered from. Turns out I actually entered on this ladder on the part of the map that's labeled the exit level, not the entrance level, and there's only two levels that you switch between. I get out as quickly as I can and get to Lavender Town after staring at the map for a good five minutes or so trying to figure out exactly where I was, but the guide tells me to ignore Lavender Town for now and head west to Route 18 so I can get to Celadon City. There's quite a lot to do in Celadon City now, like get this free Eevee or steal it because this guy's kind of just standing there and lets me take it. I don't really know why that happens. I immediately get a Water Stone as well and evolve into Vaporeon since I don't have a Water type yet and I know I'm going to need Surf somewhere down the road. I also get the Coin Case and gamble like the guy tells me to, although you don't really need to gamble at all to progress in the game. I give the girl on top of the department store some drinks as well in hopes of getting a good TM like Ice Beam for my new Vaporeon as the guy says I could get Ice Beam. I named the pouring on Joey by the way, but I don't get any special TM unfortunately, so Joey is just stuck knowing Water Pulse for now. Now I head to the game corner and start the first big Team Rocket event. I talk to the grunt in front of the poster, beat them, and then notice an interesting note in this guide as I head down into the hideout. It says, there are no random encounters in the Team Rocket hideout, so all fights are at your own discretion, in parentheses, where possible which literally translates to all of the fights are optional except for the ones that are not. Thank you, Nintendo. I make it through the Rocket Hideout pretty easily and prepare for my Giovanni fight. My Pokemon are all level 25 plus like the guide suggests, but it warns me about Giovanni's Kangaskhan of all Pokemon. I have a pretty easy time at the start of the battle, which makes me realize that these older Pokemon games really aren't any harder than newer games as people say, but the Kangaskhan does give me a bit of trouble. I thought Hawk being a fighting type would one-shot it, but nope, Hawk got one-shotted instead. The guy tells me to start hammering away anyway, still don't know why it keeps saying that for nearly every important battle, but I'm able to do it and defeat Giovanni and get the Silscope so we can head back to Lavender Town. Now before heading to Lavender Town, we have to collect the fourth gym badge from Erica first. Since I have Twitter, this is a breeze, and I lay down the law as the guy suggests to get our fourth gym badge. I head to Lavender Town now and Pidgeotto continues to be the hard carry of my team throughout this game. I dispatched my rival as the guide suggests, great to see that the guide is using a different word other than hammer for once, and head up the tower. I try and catch the Marowak at the top, but learn the hard way that you can't do that apparently. Guy didn't say anything about that. And after that I rescue Mr. Fuji, get the Pokey Flute, head south to go towards Fuchsia City, wake up the Snorlax, kill it because I don't care about catching it, and continue heading south. The guide completely ignores Cycling Road at this point, and looking ahead I still don't see anything about Cycling Road in the guide, which is a much easier way to get to Fuchsia City, but it does tell me to go behind Cycling Road where you can get Fly, which I immediately teach to Twitter, 
which also evolved the Pidgeot. I think it would have made way more sense to have me go down cycling road since it's quicker, easier, and there's trainers like a battle there as well, but we do exactly as the guide suggests in North Cycling Road. Now that I'm in Fuchsia City, the guide wants me to battle Koga straight away. It suggests that I level up my Pokemon to be between levels 35 and 37, so I do that for everyone except for Hawk, since I don't really think Hawk will be too useful against a Poison type gym. It also suggests that I use Pokemon good against Poison types, like Psychic types, and Fire and Rock types apparently, even though those last two types aren't even super effective against Poison. I start the battle with Koga, and let's have a little fun and guess what the guide tells me to do against Koga. Does it tell me to A. Dispatch him, B. Lay down the law, or C. Hammer away? The answer is C. Hammer away. Hammer away is always the answer when you're in a Pokemon battle. The guide also suggests that I use Poison type Pokemon against Koga's Poison types, especially his Muck, so I don't get toxic because it's a very bad form of poison. Now, while this would get around being poisoned from toxic, it doesn't help that Venusaur, my only poison type, and most poison types in general, can't really do much to other poison types like Koga's Muck. Since the guy tells me to do this, I do it anyway, even though using Pidgeot is clearly the better option for this battle. I stall with Leech Seed on Venusaur anyway, and get through the gym pretty easily, although it does take quite a few turns. After getting the fifth badge, I head into the Safari Zone to collect Surf and the Gold Teeth, which I can then exchange for Strength, catch this random Parasect for no reason, which I'll probably never use, and that pretty much wraps up everything we need to do in Fuchsia City for now. The guy tells me to head back to Celadon City to get the tea from this lady so I can give it to the guards and then pass it to Saffron City. It probably would have made more sense to tell me to do this when I first got to Celadon, but that really isn't that big of a deal. The first thing the guy tells us to do here is to take on the mini gym, aka the fighting dojo. Pidgeot and Vaporeon make this very easy, and at the end I'm rewarded between the choices of one of two Pokemon. The options are Hitmonchan, one of the coolest Pokemon in existence, and Hitmonlee, a cool Pokemon but not nearly as cool as Hitmonchan, so I pick Hitmonchan of course and name it Jackie. Now we have to head through the Sylphco, and luckily the guide has a cheat sheet for us that allows us to get through it rather quickly while ignoring most of the trainers. Towards the end we have a rival fight, and all the guy does is trash my rival saying how this fight should be so easy. It even goes in on his execute and a little bit on his Growlithe for some reason, saying quote, Execute is well, a sad joke, and if it thinks it's gonna help against the Elite Four, it needs its head examined. Pretty much the same goes for Growlithe though, it can be tricky against your grass type Pokemon, so watch it. Not sure what whoever wrote this has against Execute and Growlithe, but the rival battle was pretty easy and wasn't much of a threat. After the battle, I speak to this chap, as the guide calls them, to get this Lapras, then proceed into the next room where Giovanni is waiting for us. The guide says how this fight isn't too bad, and how, quote, his Nidorino and Rhyhorn should go down fairly easily because their levels at this point are no match for a decent Electric, Water, or Grass type. Seeing as I have a Vaporeon and a Venus- wait a second, did it say Electric type? It did, didn't it? Against a Ground type like Rhyhorn? I'll forgive this error since there hasn't been one in the sky for a little while, but I beat the first two Pokemon pretty easily. I hammer away at the Kangaskhan like the guy suggests yet again, haven't heard that in a little while, and now it's time for Giovanni's Nidoqueen, which is one of his strongest Pokemon as of right now. The guide proceeds to tell me that Nidoqueen is easily cooked with a fairly well-powered electric Pokemon, but I don't have an electric type, and again, Nidoqueen is a ground type, so electric types won't help at all. That's the second time in this section alone that it tells me to use an electric type against a ground type. I finish up with Giovanni's battle pretty easily regardless, get the Master Ball, and now we have to head to Sabrina's gym to fight her. I get my Pokemon to around level 40 as the guide suggests, and follow the map to Sabrina through the teleporters. I thought it was funny how the guide also suggests I destroy the trainers before Sabrina. The guide writer is just getting more and more savage as we get on to the later half of this game. My Vaporeon has bite, so this gym really isn't too bad since it's mostly psychic types, but it warns me about Sabrina's Alakazam. It says, it's fast, and many of its moves can lay waste to your intrepid band in two shakes of a lamb's tail. I have no idea what that means. But I get through this gym pretty easily again and head towards Pallet Town so I can surf south of Route 21 into Cinnabar Island. Now that we're in Cinnabar Island, the first event the guide wants me to do is revive my fossil, and I do that immediately, but just put it in the box right away since it's only level 5. 
I know that I still have this level 5 Caterpie on my team that I've had since Viridian Forest and I've been using since Death Fodder, but since my team is really top heavy between Pidgeot and Vaporeon, I see no reason to replace it or add a new team member as of right now. Now we head into the mansion to find the key to the gym since it's locked, and the guide does a pretty good job of guiding me across it. I got a Growlithe and named it Rover, and now since my Pokemon are all mostly above level 40, it means I'm ready to take on Blaine. I head in the gym, proceed to one-shot nearly everything with Vaporeon, only going back to heal because I ran out of Surf PP, and Vaporeon is also slowly overtaking Pidgeot as being the best Pokemon on my team. I defeat Blaine very easily, get the 7th gym badge, and right after Blaine we have to head back to Viridian City to take on the 8th and final gym leader. It says that I should be at least level 45 at this point, and I'm close enough so I go in there anyway, but it also warns me that Giovanni has a level 54 Nidoking, which seems pretty scary because that's quite the level discrepancy, if I'm only supposed to be around level 45. I go through this pretty easily regardless, and notice that the Nido King is actually level 45, not 54, so it's just a typo. The guide really likes to make mistakes on Giovanni fights for some reason. Maybe I'm being overcritical since this is a 15 plus year old guide written by somebody who has probably played many other games and has written many other guides and can't know everything about every game they play, but if I've never played Pokemon before and I follow this guide exactly, I'd definitely be confused or lost at some parts. Luckily, it doesn't tell me to use electric types against his ground types this time, and continuing on with the fight, I also realized that I've swept pretty much every single gym very easily since Lieutenant Surge, including this final gym, and I feel really good heading to Elite Four for the last stretch of this game. I stock up on some items before heading into Victory Road, but we have another rival battle to take care of first. The guy doesn't say much about this fight, so I get through it pretty easily, but have to rely on stalling out the Gyarados with Toxic and Leech it on my Venusaur since I can't really hit it too hard with anything else. I continue to hammer away as the guy suggests yet again for about the ninth time now, and it makes me wonder, who even wrote this guy? They have such a different style of writing for a guide with words and phrases I don't really see written a lot, and I'm sure that if they're involved with games media, they probably have a Twitter account or something. I notice on the very first page of the guide it has the name Eric ECM Milonas. It's funny because when I first played through Fire Red as a kid, I actually named my character Eric for no particular reason, my name's not even Eric, and now the person guiding us through Fire Red is named Eric. I look them up and the first result is an obituary. Eric unfortunately passed away in 2018 at the age of 43, and now I feel kind of bad for making fun of this guide so much. Looking at some of Eric's other work, they actually wrote a lot of other guides for a lot of games I remember from my childhood. Fire Red and Leaf Green of course, but then there's other games like Spyro, Enter the Dragonfly, Sonic Advance 2, Beyblade V-Force, and many of the older Dragon Ball Z games. Eric has a lot of other works in games media as well, and after researching a bit about Eric, they've done a lot of interesting work. So for the rest of this run, I'm doing it for you, Eric. I get through Victory Road pretty easily thanks to this cheat sheet Eric wrote for us in the guide. I catch an Onyx since level 46, higher than some of my team members even, and I name it Rocky. I reach the end of Victory Road and decide to grind up a little bit to match some of the levels in the Elite Four. I level up all my Pokemon to around the early to mid 50s since I noticed that a lot of the Elite Four members have their Pokemon in the mid to late 50s, and now seems like a pretty good time to recap the team. First, we have Subscribe the Venusaur, our star that has been with us from the very beginning. Then we have Twitter, the Pidgeot, the first Pokemon we ever caught, and the Pokemon that carried us through the middle part of the game. Then we have Hawk, the Primeape, which hasn't really been used much since the Koga fight, but should be pretty good in the Elite Four. Then we have Dan, the level 5 Caterpie that's been with us since Viridian Forest. It was originally level 3 when I caught it, and I didn't try to level it up, but somehow I sent it in just to get knocked out to get a free switch, went for a tackle, and somehow actually got a KO and got some levels, so that's how it got to level 5. And I know I'll definitely need to send it out to die in the Elite Four to heal some of my other Pokemon. Then we have Joe the Vaporeon, which has been the best Pokemon on our team as of lately. And finally, we have the new guy, Rocky the Onyx. I step into the first room, and the Ice-type trainer Lorelei is waiting for us. I know Hawk should be pretty useful in this fight, so I lead with him and get a few nice KOs with my Fighting-type attacks. Eventually, Hawk goes down, and this Jinx is a pain, just like Eric warned us about in the guide. I eventually hammer away at it with Vaporeon, and now it's time to fight Bruno. I use Twitter to take care of Bruno's fighting types, then Venusaur and Vaporeon for the rest of his team as they're weak to grass and water, and get through him pretty easily. And then we have Agatha, arguably the hardest member of the Elite Four thanks to her two Gengars. I taught Earthquake to Onyx since Poison is weak to ground and Gengars are poison. 
thinking this would be a pretty easy fight, but then I remembered that Gengar and Haunter have levitated in this generation, so I can't use ground-type moves to knock them out, unfortunately. This fight really was a team effort with everyone getting in on the action, but luckily Venusaur finishes off the final Gengar after a lot of my team members go down. I heal up and now it's time for Lance, the final member of the Elite Four. Eric warns us about Lance's Hyper Beams, although it really isn't that strong of a move in this generation. Lance has two Dragonairs, which Eric tells us to use electric moves on, despite them not being super effective. Apparently everything is weak to electric according to this guide. But Vaporeon did a pretty good job in the fight though, since it has a super effective move for everything on Lance's team except for the Gyarados, which I again stall out with Venusaur. And now we have one final battle, a fight against our rival, Nintendo. Well, actually his name is just Nintend without the O since the full name didn't fit. Not sure why I'm addressing this now, not at the start, because I'm sure a lot of people noticed it was missing the O. But the guy tells me that my rival's gonna lead with Pidgeot, so I lead with Vaporeon since I have an ice type move and take it out pretty easily, although Surf does more than the ice type move. The next few Pokemon go down pretty easily as well, but I have to stall out his Gyarados in the same way that I stalled out the one against Lance. And now, all that's left is Nintendo's Charizard. I decide to stay with my Venusaur even though I'm not at full health and try to finish this journey the way it began, with our starters fighting, hammering away at my enemy for one final time, just like I suggested in the first rival battle. I select my move with Venusaur, but unfortunately Charizard goes for Fire Blast and takes me out very easily, so I just send out Vaporeon and kill the Charizard instead. And that's it! We are now the champion and we beat Fire Red and Leaf Green the way Nintendo intended, thanks to Eric and his guy that Nintendo approved of over 15 years ago. Not gonna lie, I felt a little emotional at the end there. I didn't end up crying or anything like that, but I haven't played through a Pokemon game like that on my own without doing a Nuzlocke or any other type of challenge in a long time. And although this was all for a video, I did still play on my own time over the course of a week or so and enjoyed playing it a lot. Finishing up this game this time felt a lot like when you spend all week binge watching a show you really like and then you finally finish it and feel a little empty on the inside. I did have a pretty easy time playing through it. But then again, I was following a guide and doing exactly what they said, and I have played through the Kanto region dozens of times before, even though I was trying to pretend like this was my first time playing the game. I think that's part of the reason why I enjoyed this playthrough so much as well. The guide took me through a slightly different route than I normally would if I was playing this on my own, and it just made this playthrough feel a bit different than other ones I have done in the past. This is one of the most fun playthroughs I've ever had in any Pokemon game, and even though this 14 or so long hour journey is going to be all condensed into a 20 something minute video, I hope you guys liked it too. So thanks again to Eric for guiding